Good evening, body of Christ. This is Pastor Ronnie Ruiz from Saved by Grace again. I want to just touch real quick to let you all know when I'm recording and you hear me like finishing off on here, it's because I'm finishing off for the radio sermon. Um, because I, people can go on to the radio sermon to hear the end of the sermon, but tonight we're going to talk about faith. So I'm going to pause on here for a minute just so you could. I could get the ministry for the radio started going, okay? So bear with me, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Ronnie Muniz from Saved by Grace Ministries in San Francisco, California. This evening, we're going to be talking on faith versus fear. Faith versus fear. Heavenly Father, in your most gracious name, I come before the throne of grace giving you praise, honor, and glory, Lord God, asking that you use this body, this frame, this jar of clay to present the word of God through the Holy Spirit from the oracles of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So we want to talk about faith. And we're going to talk about faith and fear because faith is very important to have. And one of the things that I was focusing on the other day when I was thinking about faith was the the essence of it like faith and fear they battle each other just like the flesh and the spirit they battle each other and i want you to get the concept because there's always three voices going on in your head there's god's there's yours and then there's the devil's we have to keep this clear god's voice will always line up with the word of god always so let's start off right here. We want to start off by faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the evidence of things hoped for. My faith is the evidence it's the it's the very substance of what i'm hoping for now faith is the substance of things hoped for but it also says um and it's also the evidence of things not seen now faith has a a two-part thing going on here now faith not yesterday's faith not tomorrow's faith not not faith in five minutes but now faith we're to be in faith at all times. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is having that reality that I can't see this thing that I'm praying for. I can't see the situation coming to pass. But my faith is the substance of that thing that I'm hoping for, but it's also the evidence of things that I don't see because what people see is temporary. So if I hold on to what I have faith that God has promised me, I'm holding on to that faith in the word of God, not because of man. I'm not going to look at the way the situation is. I'm going to look at the word of God. And you have to get the concept of this. Now faith, right? Now faith. If you go to Proverbs chapter 3, it says, um, in Proverbs chapter 3, it's so powerful because they go together because what you got to look at in this essence of, of now faith and then the um, essence of Proverbs chapter 3, it's very interesting because now in Proverbs 3, it talks about trust. It talks about trust in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path now you got to see how these two go together Romans 11 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen Proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust in the Lord with all of your heart Lean not to your own understanding, meaning that what I think, what I feel about this situation is my own physical, limited understanding. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to trust in the Lord. 
and I'm going to lean not to my understanding, but I'm going to acknowledge him in this situation and see what he has to say about the situation. See what he's going to do about the healing. See what he's going to do in the financial breakthrough. See what he's going to do in the marriage. See what he's going to do in the job. My faith is in what God is going to do according to his word. So my trust is no longer in myself. It's no longer in man, but it's in God because my faith is in God. I cannot see what's going on, but my faith is the evidence of things that I'm hoping for because I'm trusting in God to make sure that these things come to pass. Verse six, in all of my ways, I'm going to acknowledge God so he could direct my path. Because if I'm acknowledging him and I'm trusting in him and I'm leaning on him in faith, then I'm going to trust that his word is going to lead me down the pathway into the breakthrough, into the break promise that I've been praying for because my faith is following my trust. I trust in God with all my heart. I'm leaning not to my own understanding. I'm acknowledging him in everything because my faith is the substance of things hoped for, but it's the evidence of things I cannot see. But I know that God is leading me down that pathway of righteousness to walk into what he is calling things to be. That's why faith is always moving, always growing. And the Bible says from faith to faith. So we have to understand how those two come together. Now we're going to tap into fear, but I want to stay into this faith area for just a minute. If we go to Romans, Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17, it says, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. He's talking to Abraham here way back in the book of Genesis. And it says, before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead. Quickeneth means bring life. Even God who quickeneth the dead, who brings life to the dead, and calleth those things which be not as they already are. So God sees the situation. God doesn't look at the situation as man does because God already sees the end result. He's trying to get us into that same type of faith. I'm not going to look at what it look at what it is because the way that it is in the physical realm is temporary. But in the spiritual realm, it's in a whole different arena. God says that, he says, before him who, whom he believed, talking about Abraham, even God who bringeth the dead, who brings life to the dead, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as they already are. Do you know we have the very power to do the same thing? And the reason I say this is because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, our faith is built up on what we are hearing that's coming from God. So how do we, first of all, we have to have this relationship going on with God. We have to have this built up relationship with us to, first of all, trust in God, have faith in God, believe that God's going to see us through it. And that we can hear the voice of God. The Bible says that that um, his lamb know his voice. We know, we know God's voice. We hear his voice. And that's how we stay in the word of God. That's how we get directed to walk in the light. Because our voice has changed from the devil's voice, from our voice to the voice of God through the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to show you that in Psalms 103. In Psalms 103, let's just really get into this. I want you guys to really get the concept. When you have faith, you speak to the thing that doesn't look the way you want it to look. But you speak in life. You're quickening what you want it to be according to the word of God. In 1 John chapter 4, it says that... Um, the will of God, if we are praying according to the will of God, we shall have whatever we say. So we got to, first of all, 
have a relationship with God, to tap into the will of God, to have trust in the will of God, to build that faith of God, and to be able to know we're speaking his word back to him. So check this out in Psalms 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearken unto the voice of his word. Listen to that. Bless, it, bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening. Hearkening means listening to, listening unto the voice of his word. So these angels are sitting back waiting for us to speak the word into existence that it may go forth. In verse 21, it says, bless ye the, bless ye the Lord, all you his host, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. God says to speak the word. I'm getting pumped. I don't even know if I want to tap into fear because faith sounds so good because we have it in our mouth. It says the word is near to us. It's in our hearts and in our mouths. You know, in, in Psalms 50, um, Psalms 55, verse 11, check this out. I really want you to get this, really get this. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper, and the thing whereto I sent it. This is God telling how he watches his word. Now look, I got two Bibles in my hand. We're going to do it just like this. So Psalms 21, Psalms 103, excuse me. I'm sorry. Yeah, Psalms 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, listening unto the voice of his word. Isaiah 55, 11. I'm going to read it out the Amplified side. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and propose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Who is doing this? We are doing this. We are speaking the word of God. The angels hear the word of God. They're hearkening to the voice of his word. We are speaking the word of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was was God. And then it goes on into uh, John chapter 1 verse 14, 14 says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God says, remind me of my word for I watch my word. He's telling us, remind me of the word that I've given to you to read, to study and to focus on because I watch my word. And brothers and sisters, to go and hear the rest of this complete sermon, please go to um, YouTube at Saved by Grace Pastor Ronnie to hear the complete message. We thank you for taking time out this evening on KCBC to listen to this message on faith. Let it be strengthened tonight. This is Pastor Ronnie from Saved by Grace Ministries in San Francisco. If you would like to know more about our ministry, Please go to www.savedbygracesf.org in San Francisco. God bless you. God keep you. Jesus loves you. And so do we. So now here's the, the, the best part about this, right? I'm loving this because I really wish I had more than 15 minutes on this radio to get this. That's why I like to have people go to, to the YouTube to get the whole essence of this. We have power in our mouth, which is the word of God. 
God is telling us, speak this word. Bring into existence the very life of this word. Check out, he says it right here in Romans 4.17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. He's telling Abraham, this has already been done. Your dead body, because Abraham was 100, Sarah was like 90. He's like, you're dead. It's dead. It's completely dead. But I'm going to bring life to this dead body. And I'm going to bring forth a son out of your loins, out of Sarah's dead womb. I'm going to bring life from what is dead. You need to understand something. Abraham, after he had um, children with Sarah, she died. He married again and had more kids. You need to read your word. He stayed fertile after God brought that life back into him till he died. You need to read your word about how that faith is. So God is telling us in Psalms 103, speak this word out. Speak it. Because my angels are listening to the word and then they go forth to do what you've called it to do. And then I'm sitting back watching it. So as I'm watching my word to perform what it do, our job is to stay in now faith, not yesterday's faith, not tomorrow's faith, but now faith. We are to stay in that faith continuously. And the reason that we stay in that faith is because the enemy is watching. So he's going to bring fear. This is what fear brings. Fear brings doubt. It brings worry and it brings torment. When all that is taking place, that's the problem. Because once we get out of faith into fear, it stops God's whole plan. Look at, check this out. In Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, if you really get this concept, if I, if, if I can't please God, how can I ask God to move in my favor? How can I ask God to do what, I, what I'm asking him to do if I have no faith in what I'm asking him? It makes no sense to pray to God to ask him to do something and then doubt that he'll do it. I think they call that an oxymoron. But it's like you're, you're it's like you're, you're, you're um, I forgot the word I'm thinking of, but it's like you're you're being double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's like a child going to their parent and saying, "Can you do this for me?" They ain't gonna go ask that parent if they can't if they don't believe that that parent can do it. And if that parent says, "No problem, I got it," that kid's own only response is, "Thank you, mom. Thank you, dad." That's our response to God when we go to God in faith. And God reminds us of his word and he puts in our spirit. The Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, God's word is established. So if God gives you a word, somebody's going to come out of nowhere that got nothing to do with you, knew what you was praying for, anything and say, you know, the Lord put it on me, blue, blue, blue. And they're, whoo, wow, you know what, the Lord, wow, praise God, that's a confirmation. God is so graceful, he comes and gives another one. Now your job is to stay in faith. The devil's job is to keep you in doubt, worry, fear, and torment. That's what the devil's job is. Look look right here. Let's go back to, now we're going to tap into fear just for a second, but I'm not going to leave you there. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, now the serpent was more subtile, wiser than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Ye hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. What he did was he questioned her. Because Adam told her, God told us not to eat from this tree. Remember, God talked to Adam and never said God talked to Eve. Eve became Adam's responsibility. So Adam saying, hey, check this out. We ain't supposed to eat from that tree over there. That That's off limits. So when the devil came, he said, did, did God really say that? So now she got doubt in her mind. Hold on. Did God say, well, God did. Well, and this is what she said. She went right on to say, um, and the woman said unto the serpent, 
we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, one, God never said nothing about touching it, but what you have to understand is that he brought doubt into her mind, which made her question God, which made her question what Adam had said. And the devil went on and said, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, I'm sorry, verse four, and the, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God knows in the day that you eat it, you'll be just like him. So now here comes the deception. You shall not die. You're going to be like God. When she felt to understand that she was already like God because she was made in the image of God and the very likeness of God. And that the lie. So that was the truth. She was. But the devil twisted it. See, the devil twists the word of God to make us question God, to make us doubt God to make us worry about what God has already told us, already promised us in his word, in what he's put in our heart. So now if we're doubting, if we're fearing, if we're worrying, guess what? We're in torment now. Now we're all messed up. Now we're, oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh my God, why is God doing this? We have all these why questions instead of saying, hold on, I have no peace in my heart. That's the devil. Or that's me. That's me. A lot of people say, um, that we know that the Bible says God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. First Corinthians 14. But you have to understand something. It never said that the devil was the author of confusion. Confusion comes when we sit back and I was sharing this with my pastor. We was going back and forth with this one statement. Confusion comes when you start to question the word of God with the reality that's going on in your own mind, in your own feelings, and in your own emotions. And then you start to doubt God, you start to wonder, you start to worry, then you start to have confusion, and now you're, you're, you're doubting, and now you're even worried, and you're all stressed out, and you're tormented, and then you can't sleep. All that stuff is not God. God is peaceful. So if you have no peace, then that's fear, that's doubt, that's worry, that's torment coming against the word of God. You have to get that. God gave you a word, which is called the Holy Bible. He tells us in Joshua 1.8, meditate on this word day and night that you may have good success. Why am I meditating on this word day and night? If you are really going through something and you open up the Bible, you're going to have peace after you start reading it. And you're going to have this subtleness in you. But you're also going to get God's knowledge for your situation, God's knowledge for what's going on in your life, and God's knowledge to tell you what to do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your understanding, but acknowledge God in everything and he will direct your path. There you go. It's as simple as that. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things I can't see. But let me finish off with this powerful part. This is so cool when you get the concept of this. So I'm in faith, I'm trusting in God, I'm really getting that this, this is building my faith, it's building my courage, it's building my endurance and perseverance. But check it out. Not only did God say, but without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? But check this out. Here's a reward. Jesus said in John 15, without me, you could do nothing. And in Philippians, he says, but with me, all things are possible. So as long as I'm sticking with Jesus, as long as I'm in the word of God, as long as I'm trusting in God, as long as I have now faith, as long as I'm walking this pathway down the road of righteousness, because God is leading my footsteps, because I'm acknowledging him and everything I'm doing, what ends up happening is that I get the rest of Hebrews 6, 11, 6 that says, for he that cometh to God must believe he is God and that he is, that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seek ye first 
Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness and all these things you have need of shall be added to you. So now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. But I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. I'm going to acknowledge him in all my ways and he will direct my path because he has given me power to call what is dead back into life and to bring into the existence what is in heaven down on earth because the Bible says as it is on, on earth as it is in heaven. So I'm going to trust in God's word. I'm going to speak God's word so that the angels will go forth and hearken unto the voice of God that I have just spoken. God's going to watch that word to make sure that he performs what he called it to do because I'm standing in faith and God is telling me, I'm going to reward you because you're diligently seeking me in every way that you're walking, every way that you're thinking. And I've given you peace, not stress, not torment, not fear, and not doubt. As long as you stay out of those, you could stay in perfect peace because those whose mind stays on God stays in perfect peace. I just gave you all the scriptures in one statement. That's what I love about the Lord. We can even take it back upwards, right? I'm going to get rewarded from God because I'm staying in faith, not in doubt, fear, worry, and torment because I've trusted in him with all my heart and I'm not leaning to my own understanding because right now I'm actually in faith. <laughs> Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Father God, in your gracious name, thank you, Lord. You have just refilled my cup just by coming and being used by you to preach this word tonight. I am grateful because faith is the substance of things that I hope for. It is your word that is coming out of my mouth that is bringing joy and peace to my life, Lord God. So thank you once again, Father, for using me to speak to your sons and to your daughters, to break the strongholds and the barriers that the lying devil is bringing doubt, fear, worry, and confusion that's bringing torment to them. We are children of the most high God. We, you know, uh, just get the revelation like I did the other day, driving in the car, that I am God's son that God decided, I want Ronnie, my son, to be created. So I'm going to impregnate his mom through this man. But it's really me that's coming through that man to impregnate Ronnie's mom because I got a calling on Ronnie's life. And Ronnie is my son, and he's going to glorify my name on this earth. Man, when I got that revelation in the car... It was like, wow, I am God's son. <laughs> I am God. I, my father is God in heaven. And I'm walking on this earth as a representative, as an ambassador of my father. And it just touched me. If you get that revelation that you are God's son, God's daughter, made in his image, in his likeness, with the very power of, of the Holy Spirit moving through you, you can do great and mighty things on this earth if you just tap into that. So Lord, breathe the Holy Ghost on these brothers and sisters. You want the Holy Ghost? You're not sure you got it? Say you want it. Just say it right now. Say I want the Holy Ghost. There you go. Suck it in. Breathe it in. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, you have just received power and might from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>